to go to Simon as a, sort of bringing this down to earth a little bit and from the business perspective and from a British perspective looking on the outside. Are you worried by the direction this is taking even as a businessman looking at Europe uh, but also uh, even these questions of discipline, if people do end up restructuring their debt, are you worried about the implications of that? Yes, I'm worried about it. Um, I'm really worried about it. I, I think the, the term bailout is, is, is wrong in all the ways that David and Joseph described, and they're exactly right. But where it's right is that as far, much as we're bailing these countries out, there's still a great big hole in the bottom of the canoe. <laughs> and all that's happened is all we're doing is we're, pub we're pushing taxpayers' money into the canoe and paying the banks back. That is all that's happening at the moment. And until we recognise the fundamental fact that actually a lot of these countries can't pay back all the debt that they owe, until we do that, this crisis is not going to end. All that's going to happen is that governments will continue pouring more and more taxpayers' money into those countries. And that's very worrying for the whole of Europe and for the whole world's economy. Um, and my worry is that it, the whole Euro project was based on two misunderstandings. The first was a business misunderstanding, that somehow having one currency would encourage trade and stimulate growth. Neither of those is true. As a, as a businessman who buys in lots of currencies and sells in lots of different currencies, I can tell you that currency is simply not a barrier to trade. The world's future markets are such and are cheap enough that actually there is no real risk in dealing in, in other currencies, unless you've got someone in, those, in the market hugely distorting a currency market. And that is what the euro essentially is doing. Because the other great myth is that it would bring stability. And of course, the euro has brought the opposite of stability um, to, the euro, to eurozone countries. If you look at the countries that are in trouble now, they are the countries that were doing brilliantly six, seven, eight years ago when interest rates were artificially low in those countries, inflation was high, and in effect, in Ireland, you had a one-way bet. You could borrow money from the bank at 3 4%, and you could put it into housing, which was rising at 10 15%. And countries that do that would normally be punished by their, their currency, the value of their currency would drop, and their interest rates would go up. Because they're part of the euro, that didn't happen. Now, it didn't feel so bad when that was happening, but what's happening now is the opposite. They're now locked into a situation where their debts are repayable in a currency they can't afford to pay it back in. And interest rates are actually too high for those, for those countries. And there's no way out, only pain. And what needs to happen, listening to, to everyone today, it, it's very simple what needs to happen. The countries that can't pay back their debt need to have that debt restructured. And then they need to float their currency. Because that's the only way that places like Greece are going to be able to become competitive again. And that is by devaluing their currency and allowing the export business, the tourism business, to take off and to get growth back into that economy.